The state witness in the Senzo Miyua murder trial, Zandile Kumalo, maintains her version of events on the fateful night, including the suspect's physical appearance. The defense lawyer for accused number five, advocate Zandile Mshololo, continued to poke holes in Kumalo's version. Yesterday, Mshololo accused her of fabricating a story about an intruder or intruders, a claim Kumalo refuted. Kumalo has wrapped up her testimony and the state will call its second witness in the next hour. Now you see the, the height for the second one? Yes. Yes. That is short. Yes, sir. And the one we have identified as the second suspect, he was tall. We are now we now get on class in Nanjengo Moose. Now Nanjengo is big. Why you move? Eh, Ogopala, Loma Gimbiza, Begimbiza is the first suspect. Mangim identifier. Ngama facial contours is ibalalake elimnyama elkubizilayo gangi mlandoza as the first one. When I called this particular person to come uh, closer, I was uh, identifying this person as the first suspect. With regards to the facial contours, uh, his dark, shiny skin. Are you number two? Not number two. Oh, so in this, in this, uh, in this ID parade, you, you were referring to suspect about number one. Earlier, the judge issued a warning to the defense counsel following the heated exchange between Kumalo and one of the defense lawyers yesterday. He says he expects counsel to keep the dignity and decorum of the court at all times. There is no necessity for us not to respect each other. More particularly, in a case as televised as this one, I expect counsel and witnesses to keep the deference, the dignity, the decorum of this court at all times, please. We're all adults, I mean, just have to address each other deferentially. We know how it, what it takes to to speak to each others as adults. Please, okay. Linda Mnis is at the High Court sitting in Pretoria. And Linda, before we look forward to who the next witness is, perhaps we can just wrap the events and some of the highlights uh, as the cross-examination of Zandi Kumalo has come to an end. Well, did you remember that today's testimony or cross-examination touched on a number of issues, including, of course, the identification of the suspects, what the police did after, of course, the incident had happened and whether or not, uh, you know, gun residue was taken. Zandi Kumalo telling the court that, in fact, uh, what she experienced or what she saw was that quite a number of things had been done, some of those including uh, swabs on their mouth, but she didn't really quite get what it was for. So answering, of course, to the question around the investigations that would take place, uh, you know, the day after uh, the, inc the said incidents uh, took place, touching, of course, like I said, on a number of points, including, of course, the identification, the identity kit, the statements that were made by the people who were taking those identity kits. You would have heard in that bite, she explains that uh, the person that uh, she identified in one of the identity parades was suspect. Uh, one saying that, in fact, uh, in the statement that was read out in court, where um, she allegedly did not point out, uh, she did not point out the second suspect or couldn't point out the second suspect. She says, well, she gave a description of the uh, first suspect, but did not see any need to change, of course, uh, the descriptions that have already been given by other people uh, to the court. But you'll remember just at the end of her cross-examination and end of re-examination by the state, the court taking the time to ask questions. And one of the things that seems to baffle the court is the line of questioning, really, uh, that has taken place in her cross-examination around the version of events. In one instance, the line of questioning seems to suggest uh, that um you know, there were intruders in the house and the other seems to not suggest. So the court trying to get really clarity around, uh, you know, some of the things that it did not quite understand. I want us to take a listen to what the judge had to say to do. 
But what also deludes me? The neighbors, didn't they see anybody running along the street? Either up or down? Ogun your foot in Jogun Kupa Guti, Abba Oma Kelwan, Abu Ageko Jomunta Bambona, E. Kichima, Gomqua, Konoma Esa, Nome Kupu Gamqua. Eh, my Lord, and Colola Econo Guti, you must tell me what they told you. Ha. Eh, and Colola Econo Guti Bacona, Oma Kelwan, and Baba Tate eat, and Makuisa Tati date men deserve, or what is Tini and Gikosho. What I believe in, my Lord, what I know is that they are neighbors from whom the police took statements as to what is contained or what they said in those statements, I don't know. Because it's amazing, in the location, the person just vanishes. <laughs> just that, not even one person who said, I saw somebody jumping a fence, Ebukaya, or that type of thing. Nobody saw anything. Okay. I believe that uh, those who saw in a particular way so they, 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 but their statements have been read out here in court okay well to do that was the judge making reference or asking uh, Zandi Kumalo a question around um, you know whether anybody in the area in Fosloras at the time of the incident wouldn't have seen or witnessed uh, anybody leaving the home. Zandi Kumalo, as you would have heard in that bad, explaining to the court that uh, you know she's aware that neighbours have made statements in this matter, but does not really know what they say in those statements. That, of course, uh, was posed. The judge seeking clarity around what he says does not necessarily make sense to him around. Of course, course uh, the line of questioning that Zandi Kumalo had uh, faced uh, during a cross-examination but also uh, you remember that she's maintained throughout uh, her cross-examination that there were intruders and at some point even telling the judge that uh, she hears that uh, you know the defense is disputing the notion that there were intruders and asked that if they still believe that there were no intruders then they should provide uh, uh, evidence to this court. So uh, she walks off the witness stand with, of course, on standing on the stance and really uh, not moving away from her version that there were indeed intruders in that house. The state will now call its second witness, which will be a neighbor of the Kumalas. It's quite interesting that just before the lunch adjournment, uh, Zandi had touched, of course, on how uh, you know, they could see each other, you know, from their own home, from their own respective homes and, you know, the distance between the two homes, what you can see, what you can't see in that home, because you'll remember there are testimonies from uh, the neighbors that describe exactly what they heard on the night of the shooting and uh, what ultimately happened and what uh, they saw and what they were told. So the next witness then will then get on the stand and talk to uh, a statement essentially that uh, they have deposed to the court. Dudu? Thank you very much for that report.